So um, never, never went um, and pursued higher education. After high school, uh, got a job, kind of learned uh, sales techniques, and uh, that very quickly connected with my, my biggest passion, which is mixed martial arts. And um, when I was like 25, um, I started to build a very large marketing agency in the UFC space. Um, I ended up selling that and I built another one. It became the largest management and marketing agency. Uh, we were the only agency that uh, was able to sell the UFC's Octagon and programming reads and all that. We had to deal with them. Um, I ended up selling that. And um, through that relationship, um, I managed uh, many companies' budgets. And through that relationship, I managed Muscle Farm with a company. And my current partner now, Corey uh, Gregory, in Max Effort Muscle, which is a company we own, which is a, a direct consumer uh, supplement company, we met because I managed uh, Muscle Farm's marketing budget when I was in the UFC. So we have Max Effort Muscle, which has been going strong for about four years. Um, like I said, it's a direct consumer sports supplement brand. We just opened um, a flagship location on King Street in Charleston, South Carolina for our new business, um, CBD Social. We've been um, in the CBD world for about two years now and creating uh, some pretty interesting applications. And, of course, um, Business and Biceps um, is our podcast that just was basically me and Corey waiting on a website to be built. So we started recording our conversations and then companies like LinkedIn and Robinhood and Square, it's, uh, you know, started started sponsoring it so that turned that into a business so i've just been i've been creating businesses since um basically since i didn't uh go to college nice so a lot of stuff tons of questions mm -hmm. let's start here so you're in the cbd space now which is a wildly competitive space we hear from people all the time now that are all starting these cbd products where do you think that industry is going to go, especially now that it's, it, there's so much limitations to how you can actually advertise it in certain territories? Yeah, so um, I'm kind of an anti-brick-and-mortar uh, guy, unless you're going to be pushing your own uh, brand and your own brand identity. And the reason we did a brick-and-mortar location is because when people hear CBD, they just think like, oh, CBD oil. Well, C CBD is about application. It's about do you have anxiety? It's about do you need it for sleep? It's about do you need it for pain? And so many companies are trying to get in on the gold rush, but they don't give a shit. Sorry if I swear. Um, they don't give a shit about educating people about anything. They just want that money quickly. And um, we take a lot of pride in educating people and I don't want to say diagnose, but almost diagnosing them, like basically, just to give you an example, if they have sleep issues, you know, the last thing they should be doing, I don't want to say the last thing, but they probably shouldn't have an oil, uh, have an oil. they should probably should have like a gummy, which is slower digesting, which is better for sleep. And um, we just take the time to, to educate each and every customer. And we've created our own application. So we're the only company in the world currently that has a full spectrum uh, CBD water. Um, full spectrum CBD is like motor oil. It's, it's impossible to make it water soluble. It took us about two years. And um, that's the feeling everyone's looking for is a full spectrum feel. So we have a lot of differentiators combined with education and customer facing gear um, that we're very confident will separate us uh, from the rest of the pack that's just looking to sell oil to people and not really tell them how to take it. How do you plan on advertising that with the current limitations in some different states? Yeah, the limitations are, are pretty, they're pretty mind blowing, but you know, listen, money yeah. talks. It always will talk, it always has talk. So, you know, you have um, big tobacco attacking Juul and any, anything in a pod. You have big pharma attacking CBD, not allowing doctors and hospitals uh, to study it. So um, the way the way we market it, that's why we came to Charleston, South Carolina, because like there is probably 90 percent of your foot traffic is tourism. So every day you're customer yeah. facing with people who don't live here. So if you make a sale and they feel that your company provides a good product, they're going to leave then they're going to become a website customer. So we'll build our web presence through face-to-face -face, 
and then there's a large college base here. So I wouldn't do this in any city. This city is very unique, and that's why we picked it, because there's over 7 million tourists a year that visit it. It's fairly small, and there's five colleges that feed it um, pretty much around, uh, you know, the full calendar year. So that's how we're going to build our, our web presence through, you know, facing the customer on a daily basis. Nice. Um, yeah, so my question, you guys don't sell any max effort muscle products on Amazon, which I think is really interesting. So kind of tell us a little bit about that. And do you think you'll ever start selling your products on Amazon? So Amazon is what I think every industry um, is competing with. I can't comment on industries that I'm not in, but especially the supplement industry. So uh, I'm sure everyone knows bodybuilding.com. Bodybuilding.com is getting cash injections and they are on the verge of going out of business because of what I call the Amazon effect and the grocery store effect. You know, five years ago, there'd be half an aisle of sports supplements in your Target or your Walmart. Now there's five aisles. Um, yeah. And Amazon has such a great presence. And what happens, obviously, is the prices come down. So the reason we don't mess with Amazon or anything like that, we actually don't even discount our product on Max Effort Muscle, is because supplements and sports supplements in general, uh, it's just become a discounting war. You know, everything's 30% off today, 30% off today. What we want to do is we give you, oh, if you purchase $100, we give you a shirt. Oh, we'll give you a hoodie if we're running a specific day. So we, we use the discount um, with the perceived value that the customer has for a hoodie or a t-shirt, which is also marketing for us, but we never, ever discount um, our product. And to put a t-shirt on someone, if they spend $100 is roughly a 3.2% 3, 3 discount. To put a hoodie on someone, I'm still below a 10% discount. And these other companies like bodybuilding.com, which are dying on the vine, um, are giving 30% discounts on a daily basis. No, so it's like a, it's more of like an added value, uh, additional gift as opposed to an actual discount plus free T-shirt. It's essentially advertising for you guys. Um, absolutely. Like absolutely, and we'll also give free product, right? So if if I give somebody two pre workouts for free, if they spend, you know, we have an XL stack. That's what we call buying five products. If they spend one hundred sixty dollars, so that's that's about uh, it, my cost is about 9% of that. Well, they perceive that as $70. And um, that's two jugs of pre-workout. Well, it's a 9% discount. Every, everyone else is discounting 30%, but 30% doesn't mean anything to anybody. Two free jugs of pre-workout means a lot. So we're winning and the customer is winning as well. Yeah. So you, you've been in the industry, in the sports nutrition industry, longer than anyone I know. So I'm sure you're aware of this more than I am, but they tend to be fads. Like a new brand comes out, it does really well. Everyone wants to try it for like a year, maybe two years, and then they die out. How do you guys keep that from happening and become more of like the, the animal stack type guys or Nas or something along those lines where you get to stick it out and you're, you know, yeah. salvageable for years? Yeah. So I think everything comes back to, uh, I don't care if you're just providing a service, let alone sports supplements. Everything comes back to building a brand. I mean, a brand is an identity. A brand is a personality. A brand is a, a team. You know, when someone puts on our t-shirt and they see another person in the gym with a max effort t-shirt, it's like, Oh, what's up, man. It, 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 they, it's like they're, they're part of something together. And frankly, we do not spend one dollar on marketing. We don't spend any money on marketing. We just choose to take that money we would spend and give more. So how do we how do we last? Well, we're in our fourth year. Um, we're I think we're twenty nine projecting up twenty nine percent over last year. Last year we were up over fifty percent. And um, as long as we keep coming out with new SKUs and new products and keep our eye on the, on the ball of the brand as well, then um, we're confident that our, our buying base will go nowhere else because we're, we're investing the money that would be going to the advertisers into the customer. And, and, and they seem to appreciate that. 
And, and when I say that, I'm not speaking from opinion. I, I justify everything with analytics and numbers, and the numbers show that. Um, so since you guys don't spend, no, you guys don't spend anything on marketing, um, what is one thing about max effort or business and biceps that you guys do or uh, a marketing strategy that you implement that really differentiates you from the rest of, you know, the supplement industry out there? So, um, when we started this company, uh looking at the industry there was like a handful of what you'd call stacks right there'd be like a get big stack or like a get rip stack and companies would tell the customer here's four supplements it's 140 dollars by the get rip stack or by the get big stack it's 160 bucks but we said what if we could uh manufacture these products and find a way to have every single supplement cost $35 and that way everything's interchangeable and people could build their own stack. We, we don't need to tell them to get ripped stack. Sure, we do that through our content that we put out on Instagram or online, but giving customers the choice to build their own stack and then at the same time giving them the choice of 50 different apparel items to get something for free, um, was really was really how we built it people really appreciated like oh i can just get two proteins and a fat burner and that's my stack i can't get that stack anywhere else well the only reason we were able to do that is because when we set up the company we made sure all the margins were where they needed to be so everything could cost the same amount of money if you go to another company their protein will be 50 bucks ours is 35 mm -hmm. so is our fat burner you can't find that anywhere else. It's how we formulated and strategically set up the company and the margins. Nice. So you, 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 were, you mentioned earlier when you guys started the podcast, you were waiting for a website to be completed. Was that the Max, Max Effort website? No, this was way back in the day. So um, after I uh, sold my marketing agency, it was called VFD Marketing, um, there was still demand from the UFC world uh, to basically get consultation and to get some direction on how to market in that space. And um, we were working with a company like Reebok, who basically outfits the whole UFC, UFC fighters fight in, in Reebok. So we created um, a marketing agency that we ended up uh, kind of letting go once Max took <clears throat> off, but it was called Activate Media. And that's what we did. It was like consulting, one-off consulting gigs while we were getting going. Nice. So do you think part of the success of uh, Max Effort is because of the Business and Biceps uh, podcast you guys are doing? One, one million percent. I, I, absolutely. The, what, here, here, here's the greatest example I can uh, give you of the power. And I, I have no clue the power of a, a podcast is uh, we put out a book about two years ago, an audio book. And I'll be the first to say it's, it's embarrassing. Now, some of the content I think is good, but we literally just recorded on mics and we made an audio book called Entrepreneur or Entrepreneur. And all we did was let our listeners know that, hey, we're gonna put out an audio book. And we didn't, we didn't have chapter break. It was a mess, right? But we just wanted to put out an audio book. Um, it went to number one on the <clears throat> iTunes business charts for five days and stayed there like a rock. And it was number four on all iTunes audiobooks uh, behind like Bill O'Reilly killing something um, for four to five <laughs> days. And I was like, holy shit. Like, like, holy shit. The only p people we've talked to about this is from our podcast. So, yeah. Nice. Thanks. Um, so you mentioned before that you're a big numbers guy, and I know you talk a lot about this on the podcast as well. Um, so what is, what, in your opinion, what do you think is the most important metric that you can measure a business's success by? Um, I, uh, the most important metric, I think, uh, are, are, are we talking about e-business online? Yeah, an e-commerce business. I think it's always, it always has to be a, a perfect balance um, or a not so perfect balance of a customer retention rate 
that is much greater than 80% and, and new customers. Um, if, if, if you are, I mean, there's, there's companies that are fabulous at bringing in new customers. But they, they do not have any strategy at retaining them um, and vice versa. I think that delicate balance is probably bar none because, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that um, will make you here, like your cable provider, right? You see all these great incentives. Now, they're obviously big and powerful. These great incentives for new customers. But the, the returning customers are like, man, I'm paying 80 bucks more a month for that same package. Now, when you scale that down to a business that doesn't control the world, like uh, Xfinity or Comcast, um, that stuff matters. So you have that, that delicate balance and being really good at it, I think um, would probably be the most important thing. Nice. So love keeping these short and sweet. I know you're busy. Hate to take up the rest of your day. Um, so really appreciate you doing this with us. Uh, if you want, more than happy for you to leave some uh, closing remarks so everyone know where they can hear more about you guys or sign up for the podcast or anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I appreciate you guys uh, having me on. Um, the po yeah, the podcast is Business and Biceps. Um, you can find it on the iTunes store. Um and uh, the website for our direct consumer uh, supplement brand is Max Effort Muscle. And um, for our brand new CBD company, it is cbdsocial.com. Uh, and um, yeah, that's it. Cool. Awesome. Anyone out there who hasn't checked out his biceps, make sure you do. Great content coming from these guys. And thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks Josh. I appreciate it. Buddy. How are we going? Have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Hey, do you like this e-com content? Sign up for the Seller's Post newsletter for more e-commerce content straight to your inbox. Or follow us on social with the links below. Thanks for watching.